The success of the Great British Bake Off has led to thousands of copycat shows. Um, the latest is The Chop, launched this week by Sky History. Um, now, this is normally seen as a, a safe, if somewhat dull format. You get people to compete, to sort of do a, a task, be that dancing, cake baking, sewing. Um, but uh, this time around, Sky History uh, sort of found themselves in a controversy that they hadn't bargained for. Um, let's look at the, the advert for the show they shared online this week. I am patient to a degree. So if there's going to be people that's going to be getting in my way, there won't be fireworks. So I'm known as the Woodman. The Woodman? Yeah, the Woodman. That's what I turn up and I am the Woodman. Because you work with wood? Yeah. Smashed it again. I've got big fingers. Yeah, I've got little Cumberlands. I'm not going to lie to you, Darren. If, if you were the bloke in my town, yeah. you wouldn't be known as the Woodman. You'd be the bloke with all the tattoos. Surely that <laughs> takes precedence over the Woodman. That was the hardest group task I've done so far. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Yeah, possibly, but I think um, this approach is a little bit more subtle, a little bit softer. Yeah. Chop, chop, in it? So that's it's actually kind of a classic advert for a TV program. Like it looks kind of nice and lighthearted. He's someone there's this juxtaposition of he's got tattoos all over his face, but he's quite softly spoken. You know, Lee Max there to make the kind of, you know, semi-insulting joke, but soft enough that it sort of lands well. He's saying, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't know you as as the wood guy. I'd know you as the tattoo face guy. Anyway. Uh, there was something that uh, the producers of that show hadn't bargained for. There's going to be some researchers, I mean, maybe in a little bit of trouble here. I'm not sure. I hope not. I hope no one gets fired for this. Um, but it turns out that those weren't just any old tattoos. No, Lumsden's face um, is covered with symbols for white supremacy. Um, so this first became apparent because, you know, if you'll have noticed, he had a huge 88 on his cheek. Um, so you can see there that 8, 8. Um, now, I actually didn't know this. I, I learned about this through this controversy. But it turns out that's one of the most common neo-Nazi symbols. So H or H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. 8, 8 equals H, H. H, H equals Heil Hitler. Um, so he there, allegedly, well, I mean, he, he does have a symbol for, for, uh, for, for Heil Hitler on his, on his cheek. He, he might deny that was the intention, but that's, that's what it stands for. Yeah. So if you see under there, what does it say on his top of his lip? Oh, is that homegrown? Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of context here. Mm. Homegrown, 8-8. Eight, eight. And by the way, 8-8 eight, eight, also kind of looks like the, the uh, SS runes. So it has a double um, meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got um, Adam Rutherford, who's a sort of academic. He, academic broadcaster, wrote a, a great book, actually, How to Argue with Racists. Um, he sort of pointed out that it wasn't just that 8-8. Eight, eight. It wasn't just the 88 Heil Hitler. There was actually loads of symbols on this guy's face which are associated with white supremacy. So let's take a look at that, Fred. So he writes, okay, a quick Fred on white supremacy symbols. I spend a lot of time on white supremacy forums online and they have dozens of really idiotic numerical codes, most of which are substitution ciphers that a seven-year-old would come up with. Um, Darren appears to have two on his face, or appears to have these two on his face. So A A H H equals Heil Hitler, as we've just discussed. He also has 2316. Um, and the the twenty the twenty three is for W, so the twenty third letter of the alphabet, and the the sixteen is for P for power. Um, so it means white power. Um, there's also eighteen, which is A H, which equals Adolf Hitler, and then fourteen eighty eight. So this seems to be like a really big deal one. The fourteen eighty eight is a reference to the so called fourteen words coined by white supremacist terrorist David Lane. Um, oh, and these have been used by very dangerous white supremacists. So this isn't just an online meme thing. So Dylan Roof, who committed the Charleston Church Massacre in 2015, he posted a picture of 1488 written in sand on his website. Um, it actually gets more, obviously this is all quite dark, but there's also a ridiculous element to this. So in response to social media users pointing out the symbolism of the tattoos, and especially the 88 one, because it's obviously the biggest, most prominent one, um, Sky or Sky History pulled the show. Um, they said it would remain off air until they investigated the meaning of the tattoos. They then followed up with this explanation. So let's get this up. These are Sky tweets. They say, Darren's tattoos denote significant events in his life and have no political or ideological meaning whatsoever. Amongst the various numerical tattoos on his body, 1988 is the year of his father's death. 
The production team carried out extensive background checks on all the woodworkers taking part in the show that confirmed Darren has no affiliations or links to racist groups, views or comments. Sky History is intolerant of racism and all forms of hatred and any use of symbols or numbers is entirely incidental and not meant to cause harm or offence. Now, there are two problems with this. So one, 88 wasn't the only you know, neo-Nazi symbol on his face. Um, so it'd be quite coincidental if all of these numbers had sort of white supremacist meanings. Um, you know, the 1988, maybe, maybe you could do one by mistake, but to do a few by mistake, that would be, I suppose, unlikely. Um, two, and this is probably the biggest problem, his dad's not dead. So this was an exclusive in today's Daily Mail. So let's get up the headline. So exclusive, I'm not dead yet. Father, who's deaf in 1988, was used by Sky History's The Chop to explain his son's Nazi-style Hull Hitler 88 tattoos, reveals he's very much alive. And the story here is really bizarre, I suppose in the style of like Mail Online. So let's get a quote from the story. So Trevor, who is the dad, told Mail Online, I'm here, aren't I? I'm alive and kicking, so I'm not dead yet. Darren's father has short-term memory loss after a serious motorbike crash more than 30 years ago. He lives in a shared house and has support workers popping in to help every day. The father added, I haven't seen Darren for some years. I didn't know he had tattoos over his face or that he was going to be on TV. But if they are saying I'm dead, then I'd like them to know I'm not. Now, this story is so weird. I mean, the, the dates kind of do add up to like, maybe it was, maybe he thought he died in a, in a motorbike accident, but That's actually he just lost his memory. But then, it's still, I mean... And now in 2020, he's being accused, falsely accused now, of being a neo-Nazi. And now, because of appearing on the chop and being accused of being a neo-Nazi, he's been reunited with his like dad, who also has short-term memory loss. The whole thing is so bizarre. But again, that wouldn't explain all the various other sort of white supremacist symbols on, on his face. Um, and it, it does seem like the explanation here has all fallen apart. Also, like, let's not be entirely credul credulous. You've got, like... A really well-built guy who works with wood, whose face is covered in tattoos, has the number 88. Like, there's a 99.9% .9 possibility the guy's a neo-Nazi. Like, you don't need to do the other stuff. Where does this credulity come from, anyway? I mean, the bigger, uh, the thing that's funnier, actually, because I've, I've always, I've, I've said kind of like, I, you know, if I was a researcher, I would hope I would look up the meaning of these tattoos. But I, before seeing this, didn't know that 88 was Heil Hitler. But... For the producers of this show to be told, look, these are a load of neo-Nazi symbols, and they just put out straight away, you know, within a day, like a multi-million pound company. Oh, no, nothing going on here. It's all completely fine. 88 was the year his dad died. It's like, come on. Like, what kind of crisis management is that? And also, it's a history channel. It is. It's, yeah, they Which is just know these super things. weird. It's, it's, and also, why are they talking to people like about woodwork in the 21st century when it's the history channel? Anyway... Also, by the way, this is really indicative of how widespread this stuff is. So it's a major thing. Cult cultural sort of adoption of neo-Nazi runes and so on is, is, is a thing. You know, go on Instagram, hashtag Operation Werewolf. Operation Werewolf was the, 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 the Nazi strategy, basically, if the West, West, if the Allies won, they would have carried on basically through a, a terrorist-style, mm -hmm. low-intensity insurgency. There are, there are normal people walking around who uh, see themselves as part of Operation Werewolf. Be interested. Maybe we should get this guy here on a lie detector. Get him to take his shirt off because God knows what's under there. <laughs> if, that's what, if that's what he's willing to show people. That's true. And get him on a lie detector.